All right, so before I get too far into the weeds of talking about what's happening here with the primary Python file, I want to just go over the moving parts. So we have a Maya script that we're running, which is going to insert a path where Maya can go and look to find this file. We're going to go ahead and grab reload from the import lib module, which is included by default. This Maya UI template is this file. You can see right there. So it's going to look here and it's going to find this. So this is our path and this is our file. And then we're going to reload it so we get a fresh copy every time we run the, the, uh, the code here. And it's going to go ahead and call the open window function, which is defined in here. This is going to go ahead and locate the UI file. And then we will connect some functionality to the buttons. Currently, I think close will work, but uh, Makesphere will not. So let's take a look at Maya and our little Python script. So if I just run this code now, it will go ahead and open the tool as we have created it. Makesphere doesn't do anything and close is gonna go ahead and close the tool. So if there's an error that, that's like cannot find UI something or other, that just means you've got a problem in your path here. So just double check, you've got the backslash set up properly and your path here is actually where you're saving your file. By the way, what's going on here is we're just modifying an environment variable. So let me show you what that looks like. If I come down to my search and I type env, that's gonna bring up the environment variables, which I can get to right here. And then if you click on path and edit, you will see here at the bottom, that's our path. So once it's added, it's not gonna add another instance of this path. So you can leave this code in here. And if you ever need to add another path, you can also just go directly to your environment variables and, and add it there. Uh, this is just kind of keep things nice and clean and relatively simple. All right, let's take a look now at the Maya UI template Python script. So we have to start with a class definition. You can call a class whatever you want, but it needs to inherit from qtwidgets.qwidget in this case. If I double click on my class name, you can see it occurs here in this, this line that starts with super. So if you change this, you need to update this. And then down in open window, all of these things here need to be updated as well. So it's all part of the same thing. So, and some of the stuff is just kind of Maya centric. What I am doing is when I create my window, I'm going to set its name to this sample Maya tool window. And the reason for that is everything in here is an instance of a, a, a QT window. So because all of Maya's UI is built with this, it's hard to identify, like if I run the code, if I run it again, I wanna delete the old version of the window and draw a new one. So I just basically have to give it a unique identifier. So this right here, you'll wanna update. So these two things, they just need to be the same so that as the code runs, if it finds an instance of a window that has this as its object name, then we'll go ahead and destroy it prior to building a new one. All right, let's see. So what's going on here is we are going to locate our widget file. So that's gonna be our UI file. And then we're going to load it and then this line right here, set parent is going to basically add it to the window. If I comment this out and save it and run the code, uh, I screwed something up somewhere one second. Ah, somehow I put an E up there. So if I run the code, now we're gonna get an empty window. So we're still doing a lot of the stuff here and we're not getting an error, but um, we're not actually adding the window. We've loaded it, we're just not adding it to, sorry, the, the UI here, the widget. So we've got our window, we're just not adding the UI to it. So you wanna make sure that this line doesn't have any problems. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the size. If I wanted to change it here, it's totally fine. Should make it a little bit bigger. Oh, I may be overriding this uh, someplace else in the, in the Python file itself, or the UI file, I mean. Anyway, also it could be, sometimes you can, you, you can modify that down here as well. All right, let's see. So this is very, very important right here this line. So what we're doing here is I'm creating the reference to a UI element that is owned by the class self.btn underscore close. And we set it equal to this value self.widget, which is going to be our UI file. We're using the find child method to identify this object. You need to provide two things to identify the object. You have to give it the class 
and then you have to give it the object name. So let's take a look back at our, our UI here. Sorry, wrong link. Where are we? This guy. So if I click on the button, I can see right here, my class is Q push button, and you must get the capitalization identical here. And then the object name is btn underscore makesphere. So uh, in this case, I guess I was looking at close. So let me look at that one. So btn close, same exact class, right? So if you want to identify a UI element that is of a different class, then you've got to make sure you update this. They're all going to inherit from Q2 widgets. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to change this part. And then you just change the object name. So for instance, if I wanted to go ahead and identify the other button, I'll go ahead and create a name for it that I can use throughout the class. And I'm going to set it equal to this because it's going to be the same. But this object's name is Makesphere. So let's go ahead and save it. We'll run the code. I don't expect to see anything different except possibly an error. And we don't get an error, so I think we're fine now. So what we would like to do now is associate some functionality with this button so that when we press it, we can do something. You can see an example of what that will look like right here. We've got self.button underscore close, which is going to be this previously defined button. It's going to have a signal called clicked. And then when we have the event of the clicked signal, we're going to connect this function to it. So this function is defined right here. And all it's going to do is it's going to print closing window and then go ahead and destroy itself. So self here again is going to be the window. So uh, if we wanted to create some functionality here with our MakeSphere button, we just need to reuse this code here. So we have not defined this function yet. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and do that. So for now, we'll just put pass here so that it uh, doesn't throw an error, but it doesn't do anything either. I guess we could we can add a print statement. So we'll go ahead and run it. And here we can see, all right. So we have successfully connected a method to the event of the MakeSphere button being clicked. Let's take a look at some more signals and kind of what's going on under the hood with our Q push button object here. It is often useful to look at the QT documentation, even though what we're doing is we're writing PyQT. So if you want to look for specific examples, you want to make sure that you do a Google search for PyQT. But if you want to understand and a little more in depth about what's going on, what's available to you than the documentation for the for Qt can be more useful. This is expecting to be written in C++, but you can still get a pretty good sense of what the available functionality is. So this is a class, Q push button class, has some functions. This inherits from something called Q abstract button. So if I click on a Q abstract button, it's going to take me to the documentation for that, which is going to have signals. So this is where our Q push button is getting its clicked functionality. So we've got clicked, pressed, released, and toggled. So you can actually connect different functionality to all four of these. We really only care about clicked though. But anyway, that's where this is coming from. And you can see that the use of it is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just have to basically provide the object name and then dot clicked and then dot connect and then whatever it is that you would like to uh, connect with that functionality. So we'll take a look at actually doing something here with this make sphere method in the next video.